fellow YouTubers, Trouble835, your YouTube gaming community number 11. So, I gotta hit this really fast. I got a lot of stuff to go over. So, five shout out videos to start off to check out this week Elwood High's 100 sub contest part one. He does a lot of shout outs. Neo Flynn's 100 sub special, my top nine fellow YouTubers. And what's really cool about this is the fact that way back in YouTube gaming community number one, he left me a comment saying when he got to 100, he was going to do some kind of top nine list with YouTube community people. So, he did. Next up, Nerox, shout out some cool, shout outs, some cool Darius Gaiden bosses YouTubers. It's really cool he took the bosses of this game and put YouTubers' names next to them. Next up, Equilibrium Gaming's Game Pickups, Grabs, Updates, and Shoutouts Part 1. He also did Shoutouts Part 2. Shouts out a bunch of people. Tech Romancer 1's A Murphy 245's Battle Station Tag, Reply, Game Room Tour, and Shoutouts. Man, that's one long title. Really cool way, by the way, he does those shoutouts. Okay, now we're going to get to Steve Benway's angry video. Now I'm not going to get into the whole him, whatever happened between him and the other guy. For, no. I'm going to get into one aspect of this. When you leave comments or personal messages to anybody on YouTube, because they can't see you face to face, it only matters what that person actually thought you said, not what you actually did say. Because, listen, the reason why it only matters what that person thinks you say is because they don't know what they don't. Know, they may not know you. They may not know you're joking around. You're dealing with different languages that tweak words a little bit. Same word tweaked slightly different with a slightly different meaning. Um, there could be a, a, a something that happened to them or, or in their country that you don't know about. So you're kiddingly say something. Actually, it's related to this and they get upset about it. The only thing you need to do is say, I'm sorry, I meant to say this. So just remember that when you leave comments or personal messages. Whatever, it only matters what that person actually thought you said. See, there's a lot of people go, well... Blah, I said, uh, this is what I meant to say. Blah, 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 blah. You shouldn't be getting upset. No, they have the right to get upset because they don't, just because, again, the problem with being online is that we can't actually read into what everybody says, what they actually mean in their meaning because it's just words. Now, the review critics, she sent me a message asking me to talk about her channel because she just put new, better feeling videos and updated her channel. She's a girl gamer, which of course we need more of these on YouTube, and she's only 12 which is really cool. Now, her latest video was my video game artwork number three, where she obviously she drew video game characters. It shows them to you, so check out her channel. Okay, guys. Next, I'm going to get to the meat and potatoes, and that is a question that a YouTuber A1R5N1P3R left me. Now, this guy is a player. You're asking, what is a player? A player is the hardest of hardcore gamers. These are the guy who, guys who buy very few games. They, they only, you know, usually you find them on PC, but sometimes PS3 can be on the 360. They, they spend hundreds and hundreds of hours on these games. These are the guys who are usually online in the top leaderboards. When they, when they put on the side of their page, hey, I've been number one for this long, it's not to brag. To them, it's a badge of honor because they know every nook and cranny of this game. You know, they hate gamers because they think gamers will buy any game, anything. I think they're the problem with video games today. So, his question was, I'll be interested to hear your thoughts on why people buy more games than they can play, and if you think the lack of willpower and standards of, and he put gamers, which actually, I don't think it was, it might have been a typo, maybe he meant it on purpose. Gamers contribute to developers turning out lackluster games because we'll, we'll buy anything. Now, why people buy more games than they can play? Okay. I have basically been in video games since the Atari 2600. I basically played every system since then. So I buy games, want to go out there and buy games that I loved when I owned all those systems and games I never got to play. I love artwork and all that stuff too. I own over 400 games and I basically played almost all of them at this point, okay? A little bit. A lot of people who, who buy more games than they can play are buying the games they never got to play as a kid or games they loved. I don't believe in that whole buy, complete a whole system thing, you know, I want to buy games I'm going to play. I don't want to buy games I'm not going to play. I don't want to pay several thousand dollars for one game that I'm going to be afraid to play because I spent so much on it. Now, the next part of his question is, if you think the lack of willpower and standards of game standards of gamers contribute to developers trying to lackluster games so they'll buy anything, absolutely no. If you look on YouTube, gamers are guys who, who tend to buy a bunch of retro games, and none of this money goes to the developers. 
the people you're talking about in this part are the p new people to video gaming because of the Wii, the DS, PSP. These are the people who will buy games because like, they know that's their favorite TV show. They'll buy games because they're fun. They're not the people like gamers who are like, well, I love the first three games of the series, but every game after that I'm going to buy, even though they suck. And I'm going to complain about it and I'm going to keep buying them even though they suck. I'm going to keep buying them. These people buy games because they're fun. They don't get, they are not hooked up in that, they're not all caught up in that hardcore casual gamer stupidity. They're not into that fanboy stuff. They just want to buy games that they, people don't like these guys and gamers and players don't like these people because they'll buy the mini game collection stuff that they don't like. The other aspect of this that I think people forget is the video game developers themselves. Listen, last generation way I won down my system. You can make a mediocre game and make a lot of money off of it. They, developers today have need to change the way they make games. They need to make the games that are strength of the systems, for one, and they need to make the games that sell. So that's my answer to your question. Now, Eskimo Ninja 149 had sent me a personal message saying he did not realize that I already shot him out and that uh, he only did the sub for sub because for my subs and that you know it's really hard getting subs when you first start on YouTube. He's new on YouTube. And again, he's learning the rules and learning his way around. And he, really, he told me he'll never do sub for sub again. No big deal, man. We all, we all start off, we all learn the rules as we go along. It's the first time I ever deleted anybody's comments to my channel. I love people who give comments the opposite of my opinions and give really detailed reasons why. Love it. So, now we are going to get to the live streams I saw this week. First of all, Steve Benway's live stream. Great guy. Great YouTuber, as far as I'm concerned. Always been a gentleman when I've ever had any contact with him. His live stream is great because he sits there, he talks whatever people question, he'll talk about anything. He'll talk about games, his personal life, whatever. He sits there for several hours, not just for a little while, but several hours there. And a lot of the people in there, you know, they're all talking. It's very active chat. Really cool chat that he does that. Now, next up. Mondo Cool Cash 13. I was in that chat for a little bit. I didn't say anything. Again, just like Steve Benway's, I just wanted to, to see what was going on, you know, the vibe and what everybody's doing. Um, the chat in there is very, very active, even though there's, you know, 20 people in there, but very, very active. They don't like the, uh, they don't like a certain person on the other podcast, is all I could say. And uh, it's cool that you get in there and they're talking about the podcast that goes along and other stuff. And Jerry the Terrifying, you know, who does the podcast is also in there when he's playing the interview he already recorded. And so they're very active. They're talking about all kinds of cool stuff. It adds another dimension to that podcast. And last, Tark 77's live stream. I was just going to go in there for 10 minutes, watch what's going on. I've been in there before. And then I was going to leave. And he came in gaming, saw I was in there, and he, and he said, hey, Trouble. And I answered to him. And I know a lot of, I've comment, a lot of these people in there have either commented to me or I commented to them. You know, Vinny Blacklog, um, Jay Blackheart, Atark77, um, you know, Buffer Kid, Back Forward Punch, Amy Bros is in there. A lot of cool people in there who, who said hi and every stuff. And so instead of being in there for 10 minutes, I was in there for an hour. And of course, my wife comes home and says, hey, we got to go to family, you know, this function hour. Did you do your video yet? No, so I had to get off there. I didn't say anything. I had to get off, came down here, and did YouTube Game Community number 10. Last thing I'm going to talk about all gen, uh, all gen Gamers number 5. If you didn't hear at the end of the video or podcast, the EMU reviewer is going to now do the audio for that podcast. He does a really good job with audio for his. So it would be really cool for a guy who specializes in that to help. Uh, maybe fix some of the small problems with the podcast. But at the very end of the blooper part, that is the best part of this because that's what that's what their podcast should be about. That to me was very fun. Watching them joking and being very, you know, talking back and forth and not worrying about the other person when the other person talks. That's what they're missing to me on their show. But this one was really cool. The guy talked about Neo Geo, the, the, the guest. And, and this one was basically Johnny Malone basically taking over being the host because uh, Peter Dora didn't know much about the Neo Geo. And so... And he kept it very fast paced because he, you know, he knows it. And they were talking, you know, and no slow down to people waiting for another person to talk. But it was really good. And and so if they just get to what the, the bloopers was, that, that podcast would be great. So anyway, enough about that. So I went through YouTube Gaming Community 1 through 10. And I looked at comments that I'm going to talk about. Uh, first one is from New Coleco. This 
topic was trolls. He had gotten some as soon as shoutouts became popular on YouTube, and he did a video on the subject and a cleanup in his subscriber list. So he went through his subscriber list and cleaned it up. Listen, if you go to your subscriber list, first you're going to find people who no longer, their channels are gone on YouTube. You know, they say they're still there. And you're going to find trolls. If, if For the people who want to get rid of these people, now listen, I understand if you have thousands of subscribers, it's hard to do this, but check out this video if you want to see how to do it. Next up, Jolly Sepp said, Hmm, cool idea. I'm from Germany myself, and I could show a lot of my game boxes from my collection. You know, if you do that, I will shout it out here because I love different country game box art. Next up, M U R A G A R U 553. Wow, how sad is that? Seriously? Are subs really that important? To me, I'd rather have 100 subs and 75 and comment on all my videos than having 10,000 subs and 50 comment on my videos. And Mark Regier kind of gets in the same thing. I like people making comments on my videos and often respond back to them. I often check out their channels. If I like it, what I see, I'll subscribe. I think we can all be grateful that a free service like YouTube actually exists. And he's actually right. So listen, YouTube is free. You can affect p millions of people from countries all over the world. And, and, and to get that kind of exposure, let alone, you know, people actually hear your opinions. Really, really cool. Next up, Cessna Ace. Agree. I try to be as formative as possible. Some may think it's mere babbling. I do tend to babble, lol, but I am trying to interject as much info as possible in my own style. So I frequently get asked questions in the comments to my vids that I went out of my way to cover in the video itself. That only encourages me to babble further in future videos as I impart the same info in more than one way. Now, if you're dealing with one subject in your video, I really encourage you to... to, to do the same info in very different ways, like he says, because each person understands things differently. The older school gamer said, aren't these people trolls? Now, the reason why I bring this comment up is, listen, after YouTube Gaming Community 8, he put that. Now, the guy who was a subscriber to XPRENTAS at the time was defending his, his the channel he liked, and he considers him a friend. So I don't consider him a troll. He that I was wrong and was defending his friend. Now, he didn't actually make a point. He just said, your channel sucks. Okay, fine. That's fine. Whatever. You know, that's fine. But I don't consider these people trolls. It's all against your opinion. Listen, there are other play times when the people defend you and, and because they thought they said somebody else is wrong. And they're not necessarily trolls. They're just defending the other guy. If you say something on YouTube, attack somebody, their subs are going to get mad and going to say things to you. Next up, the completist. With regards to some of the things you said, I don't personally think games nowadays is that expensive. I specifically remember paying $80 to $100 for NES and Super NES games in Canada. To get current games for $40 to $60 is quite a nice change to what it was 20 years ago. And he's right, back then, for those who weren't around, there were games $80 to $100. They needed special chips in there to make them, you know, to have more memory and do this and that. But my complaint was basically that, you know, all games they just come out basically at a flat 60 price range. They don't really deviate from that at all. But he actually makes one good point. Really great point. Now, next up, the DVD Gamer. Have you seen Capital NES Capades? Who just started his channel. He has an insane collection in game room. And you know what? I did check out his videos. He gets a shout out here. And he does have one insane game room. It's really cool. Again, the older school gamer, he wanted me to describe to people what DLC stands for. Okay, it simply means downloadable content. Now, it's just a fancy way of saying expansion pack, but they didn't want to say that because, God forbid, it stays the same word. But for those guys who want a history lesson, the earliest form of any downloadable game was on the Atari 2600 with the CBC game line service, which allowed users to download games through the regular phone line using the posts in the phone line. They were an oversized NES cartridge that had a phone jack, which you plug your phone jacks into the side of it. Now, there were some games exclusive to this. They never got any major developers to make for it. They only got small third, small third party. But they had a couple exclusive games that, as far as I know, were never made into cartridge form. So, unfortunately, very few people ever or ever will get to play these games. But here's your history lesson. The people who made and invested in CBC Gameline Service later went on to find, found and made America Online. There's your history lesson for the day. So, guys, my next video, I do have my future channel. If you checked out earlier episodes, I did mention who it was. And I'll be doing a bunch of small channel shoutouts, guys. So, until my next video.